Hi everyone, Mike Levin. Tuesday, May 17th, around 9 a.m., walking to work, and the next versions of Levinix and Pipulate and my Python introduction to advanced tutorials, I guess my suite of Python tutorials, are all very much on my mind right now. Um, the symbolic kicking off of all this will most definitely be the adapting of Levinix to Python 3 with PIP3 active and uh, installed during the Python build phase of Levinix and uh, having the place that the PIP, which is the software repository for Python that has access to know tens of thousands of uh, software packages ready to install uh, is persistent on Levinix after doing a pip install which has been one of the sort of uh, shortcomings of Levinix so far in that I was using the um, tiny core Linux's system for persistence which is creating a little backup when you properly shut down and doing a little restore when you start it back up. But this relies on a proper shutdown and restore. And with Levinix, it's so easy because it's an all-in memory, tiny virtual machine on your desktop to just click out of it without a proper shutdown, which kills the persistence of any thing that you installed with PIP. Which can be remedied by simply making this you know, deep file location that pip puts its stuff something like slash user slash local slash uh, I think it's either libs or bin uh, slash the Python directory slash uh, I believe it's uh, site packages site hyphen packages and uh, this is where uh, Easy install pip and all the other repo systems. I think there's a third one on the scene now. Uh, drop their resource files. In the case of pip, uh, something called eggs, which are like zipped files that have all the resources in an atomic little bundle, which makes upgrades really easy. A level of isolation that is somewhat similar to uh, Python jar files. I mean, uh, Java jar files, probably inspired by them, I would imagine. Um, do, I will probably be doing a mount point uh, or a symbolic link. I haven't decided yet. There's two uh, approaches to this. Usually mount points are at some high level, so that's very difficult to map it down to that deep location uh, in the Linux file system hierarchy slash this slash that. Uh, the other way to kind of do the little shuffle is um, symbolic links which make you go to one directory but actually end up at another directory. And this is often done just to, uh, uh, at the file level, to create aliases that you can use an abbreviated form of a word, like just using Python when you mean Python 3, which is probably something I'll have to do as well. So it will serve me well to figure out how to implement symbolic links under Tiny Core Linux which is uh, what Levinix is uh, under the covers and to make that itself persistent so that whenever you do a pip install it's actually dropping it onto the hard drive such as it is the QCAL2 virtual hard drive as opposed to uh, actually in RAM memory which is why uh, Tiny Core Linux has an issue with persistence. It is a version of Linux that lives completely in memory, staying in the state that almost every Linux startup goes through as it goes through the uh, init RAM. Uh, FS, I think they call it, or file system, but there's three parts there, init RAM FS. Uh, the init part means it's the initialization. It's what happens when you turn on a new machine, the RAM means it's actually all happening in uh, random access memory, not tied to any persistent location uh, on the hard drive or in flash memory or anything like that. And then 
uh, FS means it's working like your file system. You're actually booting from RAM during the initial phase of most Linux startups. And what Tiny Core does is that makes that your actual official Linux operating system for the rest of your working session, which means if you get any viruses or anything during that session, when you flip off the power, bam, it's all gone. And you've got a perfectly pristine startup point again when it reboots for the next time. This, this is wonderful and it emulates things like embedded systems where you just don't get viruses uh, or malware unless it's a, a, a kernel or a boot ROM attack, but that's another story. A lot of noise this morning. And uh, that does present a unique challenge then on installing software because all these traditional Linux file location slash user slash local are actually in that RAM space. So when you're trying to do something that's supposed to survive being flipped off and on, Tiny Core Linux really has two approaches to persistence. The first one is you uh, back things up and then it sort of restores it as a little superimposed layer put on top of the stuff in RAM memory. But it also technically is in RAM memory except for the backup, which gets put off into a real hard drive space. Ah, so there are real hard drive spaces. Yes, well, um, at the time that you start up Tiny Core Linux and QEMU, the PC emulator for that point, you have a few moments where you can map actual persistent locations on a hard drive, or really a virtual hard drive, a file on your host operating system, uh, into um, device mount space, really. You know how there's slash uh, user from root, uh, root being the top level of your file directory system. There's also slash etc, and software is often installed in slash opt, and uh, uh, there's slash user for you know uh, user files on a per user basis so that things don't all get slapped into the sort of global file system for all users of the machine. So everything is subdivided nicely, and one of the techniques of subdividing is making one of those mount points from root, like slash home or slash opt, uh, into a separate physical hard drive for all kinds of reasons. Everything from uh, permissions to easy backup and maintenance, um, isolation, uh, all kinds of reasons. But you can use this in order to mount things, but they have to be mounted from, from root. So using a mount point to deal with persistence on the uh, on pip install, probably not going to work out, but I can use a symbolic link to point to one of those locations in opt or home, which I have in fact used mount points to make sure that they're real real virtual hard drives and have persistence. So, Levinix 3.1, Python 3, PIP 3, persistence of PIP 3, um, probably an easy install of Vim as well, and a full code execution and uh, development environment with a double click on the desktop of your Mac OS X, Windows, PC, or other Unix desktop such as Ubuntu or KDE Plasma 5. So you can look forward to all that over the next few days as I do the little touch-ups uh, to prepare um, Levinix 3.0 and reboot Pipulate projects under Python 3. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again soon, and don't forget to subscribe.